Welcome back, third graders. Welcome to read aloud time of our story, The Witches. So yesterday we learned um, that the Grand High Witch had her plan of the delayed Formula 86 delayed action mouse maker. And she was going to put a drop in chocolates um, in England. And the children would eat a candy with this in it and they would turn into mice. But it would take the next day while they were at school and that was her plan to get rid of all of the children of England. So today we're going to hear what the recipe is for the delayed action mouse maker. I hope you haven't forgotten that while all this was going on, I was still stuck behind the screen on my hands and knees with one eye glued to the crack. I don't know how long I'd been there, but it seemed like forever. The worst part of it was not being allowed to cough or make a sound and knowing that if I did, I was as good as dead. And all the way through, I was living in constant terror that one of the witches in the back row was going to get a whiff of my presence through those special nose holes of hers. My only hope as I saw it was the fact that I hadn't washed for days. That and the never-ending excitement and clapping and shouting that was going on in the room. The witches were thinking of nothing except the Grand High Witch up there on the platform and her great plan for wiping out all the children of England. They certainly weren't sniffing around for a child in the room, in their wildest dreams, if witches have dreams. They would never have occurred to any of them. I kept still and prayed. The Grand High Witch's dreadful gloating song was over now, and the audience was clapping madly and shouting, Brilliant! Sensational! Marvelous! You are a genius, oh brainy one! It is a thrilling invention, this delayed action mouse maker. It's a winner! And the beauty of it is, the teachers will be the ones who bump off the stinking little children. It won't be us doing it! We'll never be caught! Witches are never caught! the Grand High Witch. Attention now! I want everybody's attention, for I'm about to be telling you what you must do to prepare Formula 86, Delayed Action Mouse Maker. Suddenly there came a great gasp from the audience. <gasps> this was followed by a hubbub of shrieking and yelling, and I saw many of the witches leaping to their feet and pointing at the platform and crying, Mice! 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 She's done it! The braiding one has turned two children into mice, and there they are. I looked toward the platform. The mice were there all right, two of them, running around at the Grand High Witch's feet. But these were not field mice, or house mice, or wood mice, or harvest mice. They were white mice. I recognized them immediately as being my own William and Mary. Mice! shouted the audience. Our leader has made mice to appear out of nowhere. Get the mouse traps, fetch the cheese. I saw the Grand High Witch peering down at the floor and staring with obvious puzzlement at William and Mary. She bent lower to get a closer look. Then she straightened up and shouted, quiet! The audience became silent and sat down. These mice are, mice are nothing to do with me, she shouted. These mice are pet mice. These mice are quite obviously belonging to some repellent little child in the hotel. A boy it will be for certain, because girls are not keeping pet mice. A boy, cried all the witches. A filthy, smelly little boy. We'll swipe him. We'll swizzle him. We'll have him his tripes for breakfast. Silence, shouted the Grand High Witch, raising her hands. You know perfectly. Well, you must do nothing to draw attention to yourselves while you are living in the hotel. Let us be by all means get rid of this evil smelling little squirt, but we must do it very quietly, for we are not all of us the most respectable ladies of the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. What do you suggest then, O oh brainy one? They cried out, how should we dispose of this small pile of filth? They're talking about me, I thought. These females are actually talking about how to kill me. And I began to sweat. Whoever he is, he is not important, announced the Grand High Witch. Leave him to me. I will smell him out and turn him into a mackerel and have him dished up for supper. Bravo, 
cried the witches. Cut off his head, chop off his tail, and fry him in hot butter. You can imagine that none of this was making me feel very comfortable. William and Mary were still running around on the platform, and I saw the Grand High Witch aim a swift running kick at William. She caught him right on the point of her toe and sent him flying. She did the same to Mary. Her aim was extraordinary. She would have made a great football player. Both mice crashed against the wall and for a few moments lay there stunned. Then they got to their feet and scampered away. Attention again, the Grand High Witch was shouting. I will now give you the recipe for concocting Formula 86 delayed action mouse maker. Get out your pencils and paper. Handbags were opened all over the room and notebooks were fished out. Give us the recipe, oh brainy one, cried the audience impatiently. Tell us, tell us the secret. First, said the Grand High Witch, I had to find something that would cause the children to become very small, very quickly. And what was that, cried the audience. Oh, that part was simple, said the Grand High Witch. All you have to do if you are wishing to make a child very small is to look at him through the wrong end of a telescope. <gasps> She's a wonder, cried the audience. Who else would have thought of something like that? So, you take the wrong end of a telescope, continued the Grand High Witch, and you boil it until it gets soft. How long does that take, they asked. Twenty-one hours of boiling answered the Grand High Witch. And while this is going on, you take exactly 45 brown mice and you chop off their tails with the carving knife and you fry the tails in hair oil until they are nice and crisp. What do we do with all those mice who've had their tails chopped off? Asked the audience. You simmer them in frog juice for one hour, came the answer. But listen to me. So far, I've only given you the easy part of the recipe. The really difficult part is problem is to put it in something that will have genuine delayed action results. Something that can be eaten by children on a certain day, but which will not start working on them until nine o'clock when they arrive at school the next day. There's the witches and the tails and the frog juice. <laughs> what did you come up with, oh brainy one? They called out. Tell us, tell us the secret. The secret, announced the Grand High Witch triumphantly, is an alarm clock. An alarm clock? They cried. Oh, it's a stroke of genius. Well, of course it is said the Grand High Witch. You can set a 24 hour alarm clock today and at exactly nine o'clock tomorrow, it will go off. But we will need five million alarm clocks, cried the audience. We will need one for each child. Idiot, shouted the Grand High Witch. If you are bunting a steak, you do not cook the whole cow. It is the same with alarm clocks. One clock will make enough for a thousand children. Here is what you do. You set your alarm clock to go off at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Then you roast it in the oven until it is crisp and tender. Are you all writing this down? We are, we are, your grandness, they cried. Next, said the Grand High Witch, you take your boiled telescope and your fried mouse tails and your cooked mice and your roasted alarm clock and all together you put them into the mixer. Then you mix them at full speed. This will give you a nice thick paste. While the, while the mixer is still mixing, you must add to it the yolk of one gruntle's egg. A gruntle's egg, cried the audience. We will do that. Underneath all the clamor that was going on, I heard one witch in the back row saying to her neighbor, I'm getting a bit old to go birds nesting. Those rooty gruntles always are so high up. So, you mix the egg, the Grand High Witch went on, and one after another, you also mix in the following items. The claw of crab cruncher, 
the beak of a blabber snitch, the snout of a gobble spurt, and the tongue of a cat springer. I trust you are not having any trouble finding those. None at all, none at all, they all cried out. We will spear the blabber snitch and trap the crab cruncher and shoot the gobble squirt and catch the cat springer in his burrow. There's all the components. Now you know this is fiction because those are not real. Excellent, said the Grand High Witch. Then you have mixed everything together in the mixer. You will have the most marvelous looking green liquid. But one drop, just one teeny droplet of this liquid into a chocolate or a sweet. And at nine o'clock the next morning, the child who ate it will turn into a mouse in 26 seconds. But one word of warning, never increase the dose. Never put more than one drop into each sweet or chocolate and never give more than one sweet or chocolate to each child. <gasps> An overdose of delayed action mouse maker will mess up the timing on the alarm clock and cause the child to turn into a mouse too early. A large overdose might even have an instant effect and you wouldn't want that, would you? You wouldn't want them turning into mice right in your sweet shop. <gasps> that would give us away. So be very careful. Do not overdose. And that is Formula 86 Mouse Maker, the recipe. Our next chapter is called Bruno Jenkins Disappears. I'll see you for that read aloud soon.